Hello, my name is Tom Boone. I'm the Associate Director for Mission with the Outreach Foundation. Mission. And it's my pleasure to bring to you this summary report of our latest visit into Pakistan, which occurred on February 9 through 19. With me, I had Barry Long, who is a trustee of the Outreach Foundation, Rich Ziegler, who lives in Nashville, Tennessee, and works with InterVarsity at Vanderbilt University. And then also Jim Truesdale, who is part of a sister organization uh, of the Outreach Foundation. We had a delightful visit, and some many of you were following along our journey through the vlogs that we we produced, and and it was such a pleasure to bring those to you. The the focus of this visit uh, was to respond to the invitation of Pak Mission Society uh, to come and meet their staff, see their projects uh, face to face. Uh, and and travel with them through as many areas as they could take us. And it was quite a journey. Uh, Pak Mission Society is a non-government organization, and there are many such organizations operating in Pakistan. But this one is Christian, and it's the only one that has an ongoing memo of understanding with the Pakistani government. When other NGOs and organizations are asked to leave an area uh, for a variety of reasons that happens, they are quick to say to the leadership of Pak Mission Society, not you. We want you to stay. Uh, and this is because Pak Mission Society over the past 20 years has just earned a, a, a terrific reputation and is a well-trusted organization. It started 12 years ago, 20 years ago, uh, as the brainchild of Adil Rahmat. He was a Presbyterian seminarian at the time uh, who had become discontent with how, what he saw going on in the Presbyterian Church of Pakistan. But it's not just the Presbyterian Church of Pakistan. I want to be sure to say this is something that's going on uh, throughout the churches of Pakistan. Uh, he, he was... He he tells a story. He walked out of the of his third presbytery meeting in just complete frustration. Uh, he was seeing so much of the internal uh, insider politics going on, um, so much corruption that was uh, building in the church at that time, and and he had a sense of call uh, that he just couldn't resist. His call was to go to the unreached people groups of Pakistan and bring the gospel to them, not just through preaching um, or planting a church, but really as, as an effort to transform their lives and transform all of society. It's a huge vision, uh, no doubt. And, and I can say that 20 years after he started this work, uh, they are well on their way. And it was very impressive. Today, Pak Mission Society is living out its call to uh, meet the unre needs of the unreached people groups of Pakistan, and it does so through uh, a variety of ways, what we would call holistic in the truest sense of the word. Uh, they, they work with community development, uh, creation care projects clean water uh, projects. Uh, they are involved in empowerment for women and men, uh, church planting, and more recently now, church leadership training, especially among those uh, areas that are, are, are not yet touched by the church. Uh, there's many areas in Pakistan that have no church, and uh, because Pak Mission Society has brought the gospel of Jesus Christ there, there are people now who are asking uh, for a church. And so the Pak Mission Society is about training pastors uh, for that kind of uh, special work. Pak Mission Society wants to transform uh, allow God to transform uh, the identities of the people, not just the way they live, but their identities uh, as 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 people of God who who God loves, and to see that seep into their areas um, of of society. Much of our visit occurred in Sindh, which is a southern province. Uh, we usually are in Punjab, but this one we went to Karachi first. It is a port city. Uh, and traveling three days uh, outside of Karachi, we just encountered this amazing amount of poverty. 
uh, that we had not yet seen in Punjab. Uh, we went to villages as close, very close to India on the east side, and then uh, to uh, near Balochistan, uh, the mountain ranges there uh, uh, on the west side, closer to Afghanistan. Uh, we saw community development projects among Hindu Hindus, who for the first time were learning how to organize themselves uh, in meetings, uh, how to take their ideas and, and allow them to percolate and develop in such a way as that they become reality. They were teaching them how to save money so that they could negotiate with landowners uh, to, to sell them a piece of property. Uh, they were learning to deal with sanitization, uh, hygiene, uh, produce clean water. Uh, it, it, and all of this takes a lot of time. Uh, and and Pot Mission Society is the one organization that stays through that whole time. So they'll take a project for four to six years. And, and the goal is that the people themselves can run these projects uh, over time. Uh, but they stay with them and teach them how to do all this work. It's, it's really fascinating. Through hundreds of, of miles of wilderness, uh, we came to areas that were affected by the floods, the terrible floods, just a couple of years ago. It was interesting as we drove through these uh, dry wilderness areas, every now and then you'd see a lake, and, and uh, we were informed that that lake was new. Uh, there was no such uh, lake uh, before those monsoons. We saw hundreds of mud huts that I would describe more like melted butter because that's where the floods had hit these mud huts and, and it just destroyed them. But in those same villages, we saw where Pot Mission Society teams had come in and with the assistance from Tear Fund out of, of the UK uh, and a couple of German foundations, uh, as well as the UNCHR, they had learned to develop better homes, uh, flood-proof homes. They had uh, learned the value of building storage centers uh, for dry goods that was above the, the flood plain. We heard testimonies from people, many testimonies, who, who were thankful not just for a handout from Pot Mission Society, but really were learning how to manage life for themselves. They were very articulate. Pot Mission Society doesn't just provide relief. It, it, it does so in areas where they know they can stay for a few years and live out the gospel of Jesus Christ. And it is all done in Jesus' name. They don't hide from that fact. When people ask them why they are doing all of this work, uh, they say, well, it, because God loves you and we serve this and follow this man named Jesus. And that, of course, prompts a lot of conversation. And so, so this is very good work. Um, our visit with Pot Mission Society concluded at their headquarters in Islamabad, which is uh, from from the Sindh province. It's about a 12-hour drive north, uh, and and that was really interesting going through some of that terrain. And we heard there about the vision. What really impressed uh, us was the way they showed us firsthand all of their financial transparency, their accountability processes are unlike anything that we have seen in Pakistan. We met interns, staff, we sat with Christians in a slum who uh, we brought one video from her uh, learning how to do creation care and then how to teach others about creation care. Following our time in Islamabad, our team traveled five hours to Fazilabad, where we spent a whole weekend with our long-term partners, Pakistan Bible Correspondence School and Pakistan Christian Recording Ministries. The, the focus there was to be part of their first graduation ceremony of the Ministry Essentials Training Program, which we, uh, through you, have funded uh, through Pakistan. Pakistan Bible Correspondent School. This is a, tra a year-long training program designed for rural pastors who have no access to formal seminary training. Many of the people that were graduating, there were 28 of them on this first class, many of these people had been in ministry for many years, uh, 10 or more years, but they had never received basic training about preaching, about leading a Bible study, how to organize meetings, how to 
uh, uh, develop and maintain a, a budget for the church. Uh, and how to do mission uh, is a big thing. And then also uh, how to do conflict resolution. Uh, they were so glad to receive these basic tools, and it was wonderful to be with them on their on their graduation night. I would say, if I were to ask if you were to ask me about my one word summary, I would say hope. Uh, hope persists in Pakistan. I've not always come away from Pakistan feeling that, uh, but this time I really experienced. Our team really experienced. Wow, God is up to something very big here. That that previously we just didn't didn't know about. Uh, God is in the, on the move well outside the institutional church, and the one province of Punjab. God's people are courageously bearing witness to God's love, and uh, and they're doing so among people who don't know uh, the truth of the gospel, and and those people are asking questions, and and Pop Mission Society is responding. They're pouring themselves out for a better Pakistan. We saw. On our last night, we visited with people who are at very high levels of uh, uh, the Pakistani government. And these are Christians, uh, Christians who are part of the uh, leadership of the military. We saw Christians very highly placed in in the university system. We saw a, a judge who is Christian. And, and these are this th- when you're visiting with such people, they don't talk about how awful it is in Pakistan. They describe a Pakistan where God is at work, and they are inviting us to be part of this uh, incredible opportunity. So again, I just hope would be the word that I would have. We do plan to return in 2025, uh, see more of the areas uh, than we saw this time where Pak Mention Society is, is just doing this courageous gospel-centered work. Thanks for following along uh, with us, for keeping us sustained through your prayers. We felt them. We needed them. If you have any questions about Pak Mission Society or about our larger Pakistan vision, which has developed over the past couple of years, please reach out to anybody at the Outreach Foundation, or you can reach out to me personally. Again, my name is Tom Boone, and my email address, which should be printed there for you, is tom at theoutreachfoundation.org. Thank you for listening. And God bless.